Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got Chelsea news to go through. So sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. We had Fabrizio Romano reporting today saying Nordi Mukiele, so I'm going to try and pronounce that, is undergoing his med medical test as a PSG player tonight. Basically, Chelsea wanted to include Timo Werner to hijack the deal with RB Leipzig, but it was already agreed. We basically got there a little bit too late and couldn't get over the line. Now, you know, it never happened, so it doesn't matter, but we can read into this who the player was, what kind of player he was, to see what Chelsea were looking at. And I'd, I'd not really heard of him, really. So he's a centre-back, right-back, can, can play further up, so can probably be a wing-back as well. 24-year-old, right-footed, and you can see the heat map here. That sort of proves the point that definitely more of a wing-back, really bombs up and down that right-hand side. Had an okay season you know 6.82 but it doesn't matter we're gonna move on because Chelsea didn't get him but we did try and make a last ditch little bid to get him but it was a bit too late all the fees were agreed contract signed and that so a bit disappointing there that would have been a nice late one to pull off and valued at 24 million euros so it would have been fairly cheap um but we move on i guess so the kunde situation we have fabrizio romano reporting saying barcelona's feelings again in the same direction jules kunde considered close he wants the move chelsea are already exploring other options as deal with severe stalling since the last week barca official bid expected soon as personal terms are already agreed so they're still still severe stalling and allowing barcelona time because they haven't even submitted an actual bid um that's obviously if you believe the report from fruit Romano. we then have another update coming from and this is the guy that originally broke the remember when um gerard romero reported saying that it was all signed it's all agreed and then he sort of had to backtrack and it was oh well barcelona are gonna go back in that's basically the situation this was the guy that broke it and sort of corrected that and he said i repeat i've known people at Sevilla for years are sure that they have not received in writing what chelsea agreed to verbally yesterday so whatever fee we agreed to they didn't receive that from chelsea and the kunde case is over the transfer is in chelsea's hands so i'm not really sure what he's saying here he, is he saying chelsea never bid and that you know it's it's all barcelona or is he saying the end bit, the transfer is in Chelsea's hands? Is he saying if we go through and actually put that money up now that we would get Kunde? I'm not too sure. But this one, again, take it with a pinch of salt because I'm not sure who to believe anymore because everyone has been, you know, there was all the reports of Kunde's done and then instantly the next day it was, now it's Barcelona for him and you can't say it's done if it's not done right, so... Then we have another report coming from these guys and they've come out and said Chelsea no longer trying to sign Jules Koundé. We've moved on to other options. We'll get to that next. And that's another viewpoint. So we have sort of Chelsea still in it. You know, it's not looking great. We have this one that apparently Chelsea is in Chelsea's hands if we offer the money. It seems we get him. And then we have this one saying that we're not even in for him anymore. So I think I'm leaning more towards this. I think Chelsea aren't going to really be all that fussed in trying for him anymore. Um, but who knows? I guess it's still open. It's not done yet. Until it's done, it's not done. So we'll see what happens. Until we see him holding up a shirt, we will know then. And until then, I think this is going to be a very confusing transfer. Then we have Ben Jacobs reporting saying Milan Skriniar is a player Chelsea have expressed interest in before. They originally explored him as part of a possible swap deal when discussing Romelu Lukaku. We've covered that on the channel. Inter made it clear that they were only open to straight cash deals. Challenging for Chelsea says Inter won about 65 to 70 million euros. So you're looking at in pounds a good 60 million plus, right? And that's going to be an expensive one if we go for him um you know not entirely not crazy amount more than what kunde would have cost um for a you know experienced bit of a leader screen would be a good option it probably wasn't my first option that i would have liked this transfer with though but you know chelsea we need bodies in the back at this point and getting someone like screener in would be a good signing but i'm not sure if we're going to put up that kind of money 
My preferred option now if we're not going to go for Kunde is Gvardiol, but I think that one will be even more expensive, so that poses a completely different issue in itself. So we saw reports that Timo Werner in this whole um, transfer for this guy, Chelsea were looking at offering Timo Werner up. And it says that Timo Werner's return to RB Leipzig is an option for all parties. This comes from Sky Sports out in Germany. So this creates a very interesting of proposition, of course, right? Because it's an option for all parties. So Timo Werner, I think he'd probably be open to that, right? Like he probably wants to go back to a league where he could compete. He's been at RB Leipzig before, so he knows he can do it out at that league, up that club. And I think it presents an interesting opportunity. It allows Chelsea to get a player that is very much underperforming and is a high wage earner out of the club. I think that is something we need to look at doing this year. And RB Leipzig, of course, get a player. I think he would have to reduce his wages. It's the only thing that'll be tough because they weren't paying him what we're paying him and I doubt they're going to agree to pay him what we're currently paying him either. So Chelsea are going to have to, or Timo Werner is going to have to negotiate to get a decent wage package out of them. Maybe Chelsea end up paying some of his wages. Well, he's there, who knows? But this one is one that I'm eager to see happen because if we can get someone out of the sort of attacking, you know, Ziesch, Pulisic, Timo, then we can also bring someone in who will be a lot more effective. So this one, definitely open to seeing that one happen. And the same ones that were reporting on the Kunde transfer have got an update on Aspi and they say, Meanwhile, Aspi Liquetta waits for the green light. Barcelona is confident of signing him despite the tension with Chelsea and that is just winding me up enough. Faced with the blocking of the X operation, the club is pressing to lower salaries and generate fair play. Frank de Jong in the spotlight, so they kind of need to sell before they can bring people in and they're trying to get people on lower salaries, so Aspi would be on low wages, all that sort of stuff, so... It's still looking like they're going to push to try and sign Azpilicueta, which I, if, if I was in charge of Chelsea right now, I would not be doing bus, business with Barcelona for a long time. But above this, they did have an update on the Kunde situation, which we can read into. And this is it. Chelsea is currently not in the bid for Kunde. Free way for Barca. Sevilla waits the Barca call to seal the transfer. There is no offer yet. Barca final details to present in the next few hours. Uh, Xavi's role has been key. So that's their update on the Kunde situation as well. Like I said, there's a lot of different things in the in the mix at the moment. I think he is off to Barcelona, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see because everything is so up in the air right now. And then here we have Nizar Kinsella reporting saying, Chelsea have decided to loan Dujon Sterling for another season but don't want to sell him. So maybe we see him as a potential wing back down the line. Um, but it's QPR pressed in it looks like from these two and another loan sure why not keep him in the loan army in case he ever does have a sort of breakout season but I'm not sure he does have a future at Chelsea in my personal opinion but well, that's going to be the end of the video guys if you did enjoy leave a like on it hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and you will never miss another video that I upload thank you for watching guys I'll see you on the next one goodbye